this video I am talking about ticks when out hiking. I'm going to share my tips on how to prevent them, talk about the diseases they carry, what to do if you get bitten, as well as what to do when you return home after a hike. This video has come about because of two different things. First, I've read comments from people sharing that they're afraid of going out hiking because of ticks and therefore they don't go outdoors. The other reason is to share knowledge I have gained regarding the dangers of ticks that I've realised not everybody knows about. There's always going to be risks of some sort when out hiking, but you do not need to be deterred from doing what you love. You just need to be educated. So what exactly is a tick? Ticks are tiny spider-like creatures that live in woods and areas with long grass. They are parasitic, which means that they need a host to survive and feed off blood. They cannot jump or fly, so away with their front legs ready to attach onto something passing by. They might not attach to the skin right away, crawling round instead looking for the right place to attach, often where the skin is thinner. Tick infestations are usually seasonal here in the UK between March and June and then again from August to November, but there is still a risk of picking them up all year round. Most tick bites are harmless, but they can carry lots of different diseases. The one most concerning is Lyme disease, which some of them do carry. Ticks that may cause Lyme disease are found all over the UK, but high risk areas include grassy and wooded areas in southern England and the Scottish Highlands. So what is Lyme disease? Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that can be spread to humans by infected ticks. It's usually easier to treat if it's diagnosed early. I'm not going to go into great detail on Lyme disease, so what I'll do is insert a link in the description box below for more details for you. But it is a disease that is difficult to diagnose because it has such similar symptoms to other conditions. Early symptoms can include a circular red skin rash around the tick bite within the first four weeks of the bite, but it can appear up to three months later and not everybody with Lyme disease gets that rash. Some people also have flu-like symptoms in the early stages such as a high temperature, headaches, muscle and joint pain, tiredness or just loss of energy. Another symptom is facial palsy and Lyme disease can also spread to your eyes, your joints, the heart and the brain and if inadequately treated or left too late it can be difficult to cure. Lyme disease is treated with antibiotics and most people that get it after treatment do get better but it can take months for some people. A few people who are diagnosed and treated for Lyme disease continue to have these symptoms like tiredness, aches and loss of energy and it can last for years. They're often compared to things like chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia and it's not clear why this happens to some people and not to others. So the best thing is to reduce the risk of being bitten. So how can you prevent being bitten by a tick? Wear long trousers and shirts. Tuck your trousers into your socks, I know it's not very fashionable, or you can wear gaiters. Wear light coloured clothing so ticks are easier to spot and brush off. Stick to paths where possible, walking in the middle of the trails. Choose hikes that avoid wooded and leafy areas and definitely avoid any areas that you might end up bushwhacking in, especially during high season. When taking a break, sit on a sit pad and not directly on the floor. And also you can use insect repellent on your clothes, such as permethrin, which is an insecticide. What this does, it creates a barrier defense against the ticks and when it's dry, it is safe for humans. It can be sprayed onto material and last a number of weeks and is odorless. You can spray it on your shoes, socks, clothes, backpack and any other items of gear. Paying particular attention to the cuffs and the collars of your clothes because that's where the ticks can gain access. It is highly poisonous to cats though, so if you do have a cat, any items that you've got with this on it, keep it away from them. Also, you can use insect repellent on your skin, such as a keratin or DEET, which acts as a camouflage for our skin. If you're concerned about DEET, I have seen studies that show a keratin is as effective as DEET is for offering protection against tick bites. Personally, I prefer a keratin as it's odorless, non-greasy, 
doesn't dissolve plastics, synthetics or my camera gear if I accidentally touch it. But don't forget to reapply this inset repellent every couple of hours depending on the instructions from the manufacturer. There's also some steps that you can take after hiking to detect and remove ticks as quickly as possible. Make sure to check your clothing for any ticks. It is recommended to wash your clothes at hotter temperatures as cooler temperatures don't kill ticks. I'm sure I read somewhere it was about 60 degrees Celsius, but most hiking clothes, if specialists, usually can't be washed above 30 or 40 degrees. So it's really important to check your clothes thoroughly using not just your eyes, but other items such as a lint roller or some rolled up duct tape. And don't just check your clothes, make sure to check all your gear, whether that's your hiking boots, your backpacks, any sit pads and any camping gear that you've had out with you. Have a shower as soon as possible when you get home, which will help wash off those ticks that haven't yet attached. Whilst in the shower, it is so important to thoroughly check your skin. Tick bites are not always painful, so you might not notice it unless you actually see it. They like to burrow in warm and protected areas such as the scalp, especially in children, around your ears, under your armpits, your back, inside your tummy button, around your waist, between your legs and the groin area and behind your knees. Make sure to look as well as feel because they can be very small and could even still be in the nymph stage, so as small as a pinprick, so it'll just look like a tiny dark speck. If you do find one, immediately remove it. If you catch it within the first 24 hours, you dramatically reduce your chance of getting Lyme disease. If you've got children, make sure to also check those, paying particular attention to the scalp. Also, make sure to check your pets. So how to remove ticks? Use fine tip tweezers or a tick removal tool. Grasp the tick as close to the skin as possible. Slowly pull upwards, taking care not to squeeze or crush the tick, avoiding it regurgitating, as that's where the bacteria is. Dispose of it when you have removed it. Clean the bite with antiseptic or soap and water. Sometimes you might leave behind a small black mouth part of the tick itself, but don't worry because this does not transmit Lyme disease. Don't try and dig it out because it will work its way out in its own time. Some people question if they should get the tick tested for Lyme disease, but the medical device that I've read is that these labs that offer the testing aren't always reliable, so they do discourage it. The risk of getting ill is low and you don't need to do anything else unless you become unwell. Just keep an eye on the area Make sure that you're not getting a ring around the area like a bullseye. Keep an eye out for flu-like symptoms, facial paralysis, joint pain, and if you suffer from any of these, make sure that you just go to the doctor as soon as possible. If you take away only one thing from this video, it's this. Check yourself for ticks as soon as you return home from any outdoor activity and remove them immediately if you find one, as it will help prevent Lyme disease infection, as the bacteria isn't transmitted from a tick's intestine to your bloodstream until at least 12 to 24 hours after the tick begins feeding. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this subject because it has certainly made me feel a bit itchy whilst researching it all for you. But if you've enjoyed it, give me a like, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to turn on the bell notifications to be notified when I upload new videos and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye!